Rev up your engines! Today I'm going to tell you why it's not a good idea to flush the old engine oil in your car. Now it's come to my attention lately, a lot of guys would say, hey, I like flushing my engine oil every once in a while to get the crud out. Is that really a good idea or am I damaging something? Well it's not a good idea, especially in modern engines. And to explain why, we're going to have a little history lesson. Now when I was a young mechanic, a lot of cars used non-detergent oil. These engines did not have oil filters on them, so the oil had to keep crud from building up on the soft engine bearings. Here's a piston with a piston rod, and this end goes on the crankshaft that has soft metal bearings. They're really soft, they're made so if there's a problem, they'll be degraded, then they can be taken apart and rebuilt. But that was all fine and dandy with the simple cars they built in the 1950s. I've even seen bills that people had for having their engine rebuilt, and it was only like 75 bucks. But today, rebuilding a complex modern engine might cost $7,500. So you don't want to do any damage to your engine. All modern cars use detergent oil. If you look on this SDP bottle, you can see active cleaning agents, control sludge formation, and clean key components. They're all detergent based oil. The old non detergent oil were made so that the oil would get the bad pieces and it would make them stick on the side of the engine and the valleys inside and not on the bearings. So these old engines, hey, <laughs> they build up sludge like mad. I remember taking apart engines and said it was almost like tar in there. You'd have to scrape parts off that baked on the engine. You don't want to have that happen in your modern car. So in modern cars with detergent oil and oil filters, because those old cars didn't even have oil filters, the oil filter gets rid of the particulates that are floating in and anything else will be held in suspension by the detergent oil. And these detergent oils can hold them in suspension for a really long time. Some of those synthetic oils, they say they can last 20, but I'd never do that. But a lot of guys will change them every 10, and that's perfectly fine because all the crud stays in suspension and doesn't create sludge on the metal parts. So the main thing to do with modern cars is change your oil regularly so you don't have any problems with your engine. Modern designs do not need to have their engine oil flushed ever as long as you change the oil frequently. But let's say you bought a used car and the previous owner was a slob and when you take off the valve cover you see there's all kinds of sludge inside. Well, <laughs> what do you do then? Well, of course you shouldn't have bought such a car in the first place, but here's the problem that can occur with an engine flush. On an old worn engine, sometimes it's the sludge and stuff that's keeping it from burning oil. It seals the pistons a little bit better and if you run a flush and it makes everything clean, you might find out it starts burning oil which it wasn't doing in the first place. And even worse, if it had a ton of sludge in there and this stuff starts breaking it up, if that sludge gets stuck into little oil galley holes, it can stop the oil flow, you could blow the engine. Things will start to burn out, the bearings will overheat, then the engine will knock a hole in itself. And in modern engines like this variable valve timing Toyota Matrix engine, realize that all the hydraulics that run the variable valve timing have very tiny little holes, especially inside the solenoids. Some of them have tiny little screen filters. And if you're running a flush and pieces start to clog that up, the variable valve timing system can stop working. I had a customer have one, bought it used, thought I'll flush the engine oil. So they did, then it started running like crap. And I told them, well, you know, I ran my scan tool, looks like it has a problem with the variable valve timing system, let me start checking it out. And when I did, he was lucky, because first thing I did was, I went to the variable valve timing solenoids that activate them. And sure enough, when I took them off the engine, which wasn't that big of a deal, they were all coated with crud and it was all jammed up inside. Then I had to take that off and then get air, compressor air, and blow through all the holes that fed the engine for the variable valve timing. And it did go back to working again. But this car ran perfectly fine before he did the motor flush. He wouldn't have bought the car. He was a smart guy. <laughs> he went and road tested. It ran perfectly fine. But after flushing that oil, it wasn't running fine anymore. And another thing that can go wrong with engine oil flushes is this. If it is a dirty, crowded up engine, 
A lot of times it's that crud that's keeping the oil seals from leaking. Underneath that, they may be old cracked seals, and when you flush it out, and then they get all cleaned out, you start leaking oil. You might think, oh, Scotty, it's just an oil seal, costs $10, but let's say it's the rear main oil seal of the engine. What do you gotta do to replace that? You either gotta pull the transmission off, or pull the engine out of the car, and it's gonna cost an awful lot of money on a modern day car, could well be over a thousand bucks. Just realize that modern day oils are really well made. And if you change your oil regularly, hey, you're not gonna have any problems. But when it comes to having a problem in a car, and you think you're gonna fix it by flushing the engine oil out, you might think twice before you try that. Because I've seen guys, flush out an engine on a car they're selling because they know it's all crowded up inside only to find out once they were done flushing it now they can't sell it because it's burning a ton of oil and then it's leaking out of the sides so you might not want to do an engine flush on any car change the oil more often and keep it clean so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell